when uh, you were on the troop train, you said you stopped in Nebraska. What happened there? Well, this was this town of, of small city, North Platte, and all during the war, this town, which had the railroad going through it, if they could get the troop train to stop there, the whole population of the town would come out and depending on the time of the day they would have a meal laid out there for us. We got there at breakfast, they fed us breakfast and anything else that we needed. On the troop train it was pretty bleak, you know, we, we had a, a board bunk and we got rations. They had mess car on the train and you would file back through the mess car and then take your mess kit and go back to where you started out in the other direction picking up whatever they were throwing at you for the meal and uh, it wasn't very good so this was a big deal stopping in North Platte and all these people were out there to greet us and you realize you know the European war had just finished Pacific War was still going on but these people were still doing it and of course the troop trains were carrying troops to the Pacific Coast to send out into the Pacific Theater and it was just the greatest thing in the world all these people out there greeting us they had music and everything for as long as they could keep the train there they they just took care of anything we needed back on the train and off we went to San Francisco where I I got on a troop ship well thank you North Platte yeah. So when you got on the troop ship in San Francisco, where did it take you? Well, this is, it was a big ship and uh, I think there were something like 5,000 troop on it and we were, we were in rooms with bunks five high in the room and you had to put your duffel bag on your bunk and they were like two foot by six foot long. Your duffel bag and you had to be on the bunk and these were down below rooms. Even though it was a fast ship, uh, it wasn't all that comfortable. Being a fast ship, it was able to go by itself. It did not have to go in a, in a convoy. And as we went out on the troop ship, as we cleared San Francisco, it started a zigzag in case there were submarines looking at it. So all the way to Ulithi was the first stop mm -hmm. on the, on the uh, troop ship. And we pulled into Ulithi. It's, a, it's an atoll ring of islands all around with a beautiful harbor in the center. There were all kinds of ships there. We stayed there for just, never got off the ship, just stayed on the ship for a couple of days as I remember it and then we went from there to Leyte and in Leyte uh, we stopped there again the Leyte campaign was over the uh, US forces had beaten the Japanese there and the fighting was going on up in Luzon in northern Philippines so that's where we went next and we uh, disembarked in as I remember Manila and the Japanese had been pushed to the north already and to the south from Manila and that's where you got your assignment and I was assigned at that time to the 103rd Bomb Disposal Squad which I knew nothing about but took my orders and you got your own, you found your own transportation to find your unit. They told you which way it was and go and find it put your duffel bag on. We did not have rifles or anything at this time. You know, you got mm -hmm. those at your unit. And I was told that this unit was up to the north toward uh, San Fernando. So me and one other guy that had the same orders, Merle Tornade was his name. He was from like Oklahoma or somewhere. So the two of us set off to find the unit. And it took us 
about two days to find it because it was a tiny unit of only about 11 men. It was a bomb disposal squad. Mm -hmm. And it had one officer, a couple of sergeants, almost everybody was, was raided. And that's where we had a lot of duds and things that we had to go pick up and the, the officer uh, was a lieutenant and he taught us what we needed to know. Mm -hmm. And so we went on uh, getting rid of dud bombs. Most of the bombs and stuff that we got rid of was American duds, 500 pound bombs and we would dig down to them and if you could, if it was out in the open, you'd put a shape charge on it and blow it up. But if it was in a city, you had to pull it out and, and we had little books on the types of fuses that there were, you know, and there were fuses, you look at the rings around them, there were some fuses that if you tried to unscrew them a quarter of a turn, they'd go off. So you wanted to be sure you knew what kind of a fuse it was on there. <clears throat> and then if you could take the fuse out, if it was not an anti-removable fuse, you'd screw it out and you'd put a, a ring plug screwed in and then a winch cable from these trucks that we had down the hole, hooking into that ring and pulling it out. Remember that there's a fuse on either end. We couldn't get to the other one. So this was a dangerous thing, pulling that bomb out of the hole and then taking it somewhere to get rid of it. <laughs>